from Squallywood, it's the Dan and Ron Show! Hello, I'm Dan. And I'm Ron. We are the Dan, Dan and Ron, Ron Show. Show. How is, How is the, knee? the knee? A lot, a lot like, like a, ski. a ski. Stick, Stick with, with us and you shall see. see. The DNR is not, not just a show, it's to keep you in the, the know. Benzy knees, ten dollars please. We definitely have a fascination with the knee. And with skis. Let's see how the knee is like a ski. First, let's do a little tour of the knee. The big guns are the femur and tibia. Along with the patella or kneecap, and sometimes the fibula is thrown in the mix because of its connection to the femur via the lateral collateral ligament. Even though the knee is only one joint in the kinematic chain, part of its importance is its large range of motion. And the strength of the muscles surrounding it. The knee is usually thought of as a hinge joint. But wait, there's more. Fore and aft and we'll soon see how this can increase that hinge joint efficiency or be tragic. Sideways, a little bit. It's good in compression. That's a leg you can stand on. Abduct and adduct. Abduct or abduct means away, like an ab stem where the downhill ski moves down and away. Flex and extend. Yep, there's the hinge. and rotation. Rotation is only possible when the knee is flexed. You notice there is no knee angulation in this list. This is because there is no knee angulation in knee angulation. The knee does not angulate. Huh? Although what is this we see? Knee angulation. Knee angulation is knee flexion, you know the hinge, and hip adduction, adduction. That is when the femur is being added or moving toward the center line of the body. Knee angulation is just an illusion of knee flexion and hip adduction. That is why knee angulation is not on the list. For us, it's the flexion extension and the rotation that are relevant to skiing. The other four are not really movements, but motions. And these motions are slight and inconsequential. Unless you are in a bad wreck, then your knee can move a lot. Which might tear the ACL. If you're ever suspected of tearing an ACL, the doctor will have you lay on your back with your knee flexed. He will then pull the tibia forward with a jerk. This is not a movement you can voluntarily make. The motion of the tibia moving forward can be made with an external force from the doctor or a bad wreck. The ACL is very important to the skier. This will come up again later. Let's dig deeper into knee flexion. Yeah, and how the knee flexion is like a ski. Skis have a side cut, described by the radius they present when looking at them from above. If you ski before 1990, you skied on what was called straight skis. These straight skis had a larger radius compared to the smaller radius hourglass shaped skis that we ski on today. I thought it was about the knee. Yeah, the knee, the tibiofemoral joint. Of course, the joint of the tibia and femur. The distal end of the femur is shaped like the letter L or a J that has been in a bar fight. Well, this is where the straight ski and side cut ski come in. While they both have side cut, it's their radii that are different. Let's ask Professor Von Kippersnack about this radii difference in the knee. Hello, Dan and you. The femur has two condyles. Condyles means knuckle, or condylus in Latin, or condylos in Greek. Either way, it's a knuckle. We stole that one from the French. 
We call it a concave surface of the tibia. Condyles also. That is just a bad choice. The knuckles of the femur are sort of round. Notice how they go from the larger radius when the leg is straight, that is the blue circle, to the smaller radius when the leg is flexed, that is the yellow circle. This is the magic of knee rotation. Just like a ski, the radius changes what we can do. So we can rotate our lower leg around this spherical shaped medial condyle when the knee is flexed. And this is one reason for when we are skiing short radius turns in demanding snow or moguls, we assume a more flexed stance. While a flexed stance is advantageous for skiing, it is not such an easy position to stand around in. Yeah, we have evolved to be more efficient when our legs are straight. The screw home mechanism. Huh? The screw home mechanism allows us to lock our legs straight. This makes it easier to stand around. Good in bars, rock concerts, not so easy in the ski shoes. Skiers get tired standing in the tram. What about the ACL? Ah, ACL, anterior cruciate ligament, is very important to the skier. Hopefully you have one, or two. Ligaments keep everything tidy and in place. The ACL keeps the tibia from moving too far forward from the femur, like when you sit back. And you were doing so well, you were skiing parallel on your first lesson and the whole thing. Don't do that. ACL ruptures occur when the lower part of the leg, the tibia, keeps skiing and you don't. Then the tibia and the femur part the company and you go shopping for an orthopedic surgeon. So, the ACL connects the tibia and the femur. And its job is to keep the femur over the tibia or the tibia under the femur. Remember we pointed out that the femur was shaped like an L and had two condyles. The ACL runs from the top of the tibia up through the groove between the two condyles. This shape of the condyles and the groovy path of the ACL allows it to be snug when in extension and lax when flexed. Here we have a knee joint, the femur and the tibia, anterior, posterior, or front and back, flexion, extension, flexion, extension. We don't go that way. Flexion, extension. Now we're going to put on two cruciate ligaments, anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament, maybe. Cruciate means cross, which you can see they're doing. Anterior, posterior. Let's get rid of the posterior, leaving just the anterior on there. Now watch when we go into flexion, it becomes lax. Extension, tight, flexion, flexion, lax, extension, tight, flexion, lax, extension, tight. This is due to the asymmetrical shape of the femur. Now it's tight and extension like when we're standing up. So during flexion, its job of maintaining 4F stability is slacking off, so to speak. Although it does allow for rotation of the knee. Bad news, good news. Hopefully you also see why it's a good idea to stay flexed in a ski fall. Better yet, don't fall. Take a lesson. <laughs> okay, with that advice, let's do a summary. We have learned that the knee is more than a hinge. Knee angulation is flexion with hip adduction. When flexed, the knee can rotate. When falling, stay flexed. Oh yeah, the knee is a lot like a ski. It has different radii. Thanks for joining us. See you next time on the Dan, Dan and Ron, and Ron show. show.
So you skied on down that first little hill. You did it real well and you didn't take a spill. You bend your knees, you've got it now. Your instructor announces we'll try the snowplow.